Your friends at the Voice of Prophecy are glad to bring you this encore presentation of Disclosure. It is time for what is at least, at least the 20th most exciting hour in radio production. At least the 20th, maybe even the 19th most exciting hour. And Gene, I am very excited today because, you know, I've been talking about my new bifocals for right. quite a few weeks now. Mm-hmm. And I've been very excited because in my advanced years, I could suddenly see again. I've been resisting my bifocals for Oh, a decade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so now in my advanced age, I can see, but I'm nowhere near as excited about my bifocals as my newest glasses. What do you think? I love them. Yeah. The the bright green and the oval shape. Yeah. I mean, they're just you, Sean. I just love them. Well, you can see them, I think, (laughs) if you join the Facebook live cast that uh, comes out of our studio or go to the website, you can see my new bifocals. Can you guess, looking at my glasses today, can you Mm -hmm. guess Mm -hmm. what our subject of the day might be? Be. Well, I wonder if our listeners, even based on my description of your glasses, can guess. I have giant I, almond-shaped I, eyes. Almond-shaped eyes, bright green, blue yep. lenses, and our subject today is aliens. Yes, it is aliens, right, aliens. which is a little strange for a Bible program. I found these on, I don't know, I found them online for $2 with free shipping. <laughs> And so I had to have my alien eye glasses mm-hmm. um, for today's show. I'm, I'm, of course. We're, we're, yeah, you're, you're right. We are going to be talking about space aliens. Mm-hmm. And people are thinking, I know what people are thinking. Isn't this Is disclosure the from the— program? Yeah, right. it's a Bible program. This is Disclosure from the Voice of Prophecy. And we're going to talk aliens. We're going to talk the UFO phenomenon. We'll mm-hmm. talk about abduction experiences. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and and you might be wondering why. You might be saying to yourself, Gene, why would we do that today, Sean? Mm-hmm. Well, in fact, when you, you might be when thinking, you... you might be thinking to yourself, <laughs> why would we do that? You might be you might feel the urge to ask that. Yeah, why are we studying <laughs> this today, Sean? <laughs> well, here's why. Um, it's because something popped up on my Twitter feed the other day that I found kind of interesting. I got to take these glasses off. Let's put yeah, them. Yeah, can you can you see? We anything should we like should those? auction these. We should give them away. Mm-hmm. We should give them away to like the 80th caller, and uh, and that I don't would know that we're set up. I don't know that we have 80 can listeners. Can I try them on? Yeah, I you want to try, try them? them on? You know what's fun? I could see my reflection in them. So here, look. Now you can see your reflection. It's not. Oh, kind of you fun? make a pretty alien. <laughs> You really do make a pretty alien. Um, okay, here, here's why we're going to do this. And I know before you turn the dial and go somewhere else, stick with me. Something popped up on my Twitter feed the other day, and I found it kind of interesting. And it started me thinking down this whole chain of thoughts. You know how that works mm-hmm. uh, over the last few weeks. But something interesting has been happening here in northern Colorado since... Oh, I guess December, January. I don't know if it's still going on. But people are seeing these mysterious lights in the sky. Now, they're not flying saucers. They're not UFOs. Uh, We're pretty sure we know what they are because they appear to be drones Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. flying in formation. It's a little bit freaky. I I remember that story. It was from uh, December of 2019. Right. Weren't the drones huge, like a, a six-foot wingspan? I mean, well, these were big things. let me look here. This is from the Coloradoan. Mm-hmm. Coloradoan. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can tell that I wasn't born in Colorado. I have trouble pronouncing Coloradan. the color. It's just Coloradan? The well, name the, of the newspaper? I don't know about the name of the newspaper. All right. Um, a guy by the name of Luke George. Oh, now that I've said that out loud, uh, Luke George, flip that around. George Luke? Uh huh. Star <laughs> Wars, Jews, Lord. Yeah, I, I'm okay. Is this a prank? No, people have been no. seeing these fixed wing drones. Yeah, those would be bigger ones with mm-hmm. white lip, uh, white lights at the wingtips, and they're starting to see them in flying in formation. And I guess the Air Force is denying that these are theirs. Mm-hmm. They're flying in grid-like formations. They're trying to figure out who is flying them down to the point where they're saying, if you see a mysterious van on the side of the road. With, uh, you know, antenna on it, maybe somebody's... Fl- they mm-hmm. appear to be illegal drones, and they show up almost every night. Yeah, they're do- they're doing nighttime formations. Yep. 
And, you know, I remember this story. There was some thought that maybe it was linked to uh, the Air Force Base that's in Wyoming, uh, right. which, of course, where we live in northern Colorado, we're, we're like an hour from the Wyoming border, well, a little with bit a, less. With, yeah, with a good a tailwind, you're up in Wyoming in 30 minutes. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, I, it's, uh, from what I recall, they reached out to the Air Force Base and they... They're not acknowledging it, and they don't have an explanation for it. Oh, see, that just makes it more mysterious. Mm -hmm. If the Air Force is denying it, then it's alien. Well, I think that's a pretty big leap. Okay, no, but they say it's not theirs. (laughs) Right. And so the police are looking for whoever's flying these drones because, well— Ruben, you're a drone pilot. You're a certified drone pilot, aren't you? Mm -hmm. You, He is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so are they yours? You don't have a six-foot um, fixed-wing drone. No, you cannot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but basically, you've got to get a permit to fly drones in Colorado. You do. Um, nationwide, you have to get a Part 107 certification from the FAA, which is a pretty um, intense test that you have to take about weather, about regulations, and things like that. Oh, no kidding. If you're so, going to do it commercially. So the mm. crime here is probably somebody's flying these things illegally. Yeah. Yeah, probably. The rule is you have to have line of sight, visual line of sight, um, with a few exceptions. Um, That's generally the case. Well, these appear to be line of sight for everybody in northern Colorado (laughs) because they can... And and who can afford, like, a fixed-wing drone that big? I mean, these are not hobby drones. So. Anyway, that started me thinking about things, because that, that's not a flying saucer. We know what they are, but it's something mysterious in the sky. And mm-hmm. so when I saw that story, it started me thinking about my childhood and the whole UFO phenomenon. Mm-hmm. And, um, and there was a story in the news when I was a kid back in the 1920s. <laughs> 1920s. Yeah. No, where, this was in the... Where did you grow up as a kid? Well, I'm not sure I ever did grow up, but, Attempt but to I grow was up. reared in northern British Columbia, a little mm-hmm. town called Smithers. Shout out to the people in Smithers, um, behind the Alaska Panhandle, way up north in it's the middle beautiful. of nowhere. It's really a beautiful town, beautiful. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I remember this story in the local newspaper when I was a kid. Now, this is in the mid-19... Well, I'll admit it. It's in the 70s, mm-hmm. probably the mid-1970s. Uh, about a delta-shaped object in the sky that nobody could explain. Right. Delta-shaped, right. meaning it's a triangle, right? Mm-hmm. Like the Greek mm-hmm. letter delta. Um, so, and so there was a story that this was flying around in the sky and nobody knew what it was. Well, what what do you think it was? Well, you know, the newspaper, are these visitors from another world? Mm-hmm. Well, here's what's interesting. In 1977, the uh, American Air Force went public with their stealth aircraft, and they flew demonstration flights for the first time. And by the time you get down to about 1987, 1988, uh, they were completely public with these things. And so they were quietly experimenting with triangle-shaped airplanes, and that's what we were seeing in the sky just a few years earlier mm-hmm. up, up, up there. So I think, honestly, they were aircraft that mm-hmm. nobody had ever seen before, mm-hmm. I think. That- yeah. That's logical. I'm no that's aviation a, that's a lo- expert. Logical explanation. And I know, I know there'll be people that are angry now because I've, you know, in my mind, I've dismissed the idea that these are Martians. Uh, we've been to Mars since. There's no, nobody living there. Right. 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 And right. no Delta-shaped aircraft parked on the surface. Right. Um, anyway, but then I started thinking about that, and then I started thinking about my whole childhood um, as a kid. Well, my whole childhood from is... From one tweet. That's, that's, from one tweet. Well, <laughs> there's, I don't know. There's a lot you know, I never, out of that. I never go to sleep, right? right. So all I'm, night long I read one tweet like this, and uh-huh. the next thing you know, I'm. I, um, doesn't your brain go down these rabbit trails in the quiet hours? Yeah, but my my brain goes to sleep eventually, yeah, unlike well, yours. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, it never does go to... In 1978, <laughs> this TV show comes out called Project Blue Book. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I watched it. I think they're remaking it for this generation. I've I think heard, it's coming. I've heard that yeah. there's a new version of that show coming out. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, and it was Project Blue Book was this, um, I think, an, an actual government program to account for sightings of mysterious objects in the sky. You know, it, it was. It was one of three studies. But Project Blue Book specifically was a study done by the U.S. Air Force, and it ran from the early 50s, and it went all the way until 1970. And so... That really okay. did Which explains, that study. Yeah, that that was still recent history when that original. Okay, so nineteen seventy eight comes created. out. It was they had just mm-hmm. closed the program. So pretty much, Project Blue Book was an alien TV show, and I don't know why my parents let me watch it because it used to scare the stuffing out of me. This show. <laughs> I mean, no, there was this one I never episode. Saw it, so I don't. Oh remember no, it. it started. 
Ezekiel saw the wheel. And and it's trying to say that what Ezekiel saw in Ezekiel chapter 1 was a flying oh, saucer, right? Okay. And so I was riveted as a kid. Man, oh, man, did I love that. And, well, I loved it and hated it because I couldn't sleep after I watched an episode. Mm-hmm. I remember this one in particular. These flying saucers would go by the window of a, an apartment building, and they were living on, like, the 20th, 30th floor, whatever it was. And they would look out the window at the I- inhabitants of the apartment, and they had horse heads. These aliens had horse heads. Oh, that would scare a little kid. Oh, that yeah, no, sounds no, no. awful. I'm, I'm eight years old watching this or nine yeah. years old and it's like ah, i can't sleep and then no. then wouldn't you know it in a box of books i found this book as a kid like this is way too young for this but i found oh. a copy of eric von daniken's look this is the one this is the, the one i still one. have it mm-hmm. eric von daniken's chariots of the gods now of course that was that was huge in the 70s and the 80s well 60s too when did this come out the first time in the 19 Hmm. oh 1970 this comes out i thought it was the 70s. so this is all the rage right we have flying saucer stuff in the 1950s and hollywood making flying saucer movies and Mm -hmm. then this gets printed in 1970 and i'm too young but i read this and the subtitle is, or one of the advertising blurps on that, you see that? Yeah, was God an astronaut? Was God an astronaut? So this is, he's the granddaddy of this theory um, that aliens sort of messed with life here on Earth. They either put life here or they came and they tampered with mm-hmm. primitive organisms and, and changed their DNA or interbred with us, and then we became semi intelligent. Mm. But of course, this is 1970. This is coming out of the what began really in the 40s, at, towards the end of World War II. This, right. I, this sort of cultural obsession, almost yep. with unidentified flying objects. Right, mm-hmm. and, and it goes on to this day. Eric Von Daniken. I think there was a movie that came out, you know, after the book, um, and now today. In his tradition, he's got grandchildren, I guess, in the field of uh, television production because hmm. now we've got Ancient Aliens, which is the same thing. You got a new episode every week, and I think they run Ancient Aliens on the History Channel. Hmm. It's like unaware. Um, there was a day, folks, when the History Channel was actually <laughs> was about history? history. Yeah, I right, know, but maybe right. they realize they they can't get much market share with just plain old history. Yeah. So they've got Ancient Aliens, and um, that was that. So, so we've got. The Delta Shape thing, Project Blue Book. Then I read Chariots of the Gods, and I actually got in trouble. I was going to a Christian school, mm-hmm. and um, for show and tell one day, I, st- I-, I stood up and told the teacher in this Christian school that Ezekiel saw a flying saucer, Uh-oh. and that the eyes around the rim of the wheel were landing lights, and I remember Uh-oh. having to write lines I will not question the Bible. I will not question the Bible. I will not question the Bible. Well, maybe, maybe today on, on today's program we can look at Ezekiel. Yeah, no, one. we should look that at that. That would be good. That, that might be part of our Bible study. Sure. Um, then, remember last year, you mm-hmm. were just talking about why are we doing this today? Mm-hmm. Uh, there was this thing at Area 51 called, it was a Facebook movement called Storm Area 51. I and remember. they were trying to get a half a million people who would show up at Area 51. This is just a stupid move, but and we're going to storm this Air Force base, this top secret Air Force base. You know, what do you think is going to happen if you storm a top secret Air Force base? You know, yeah. you're going to last six minutes, this rebellion, and they're going to strafe the crowd or bomb them out of existence. And and, and, but anyway, and I think it, I think it petered out. I don't I, I think, don't think it materialized. I, well, I think, no, I think some people showed up and uh. the town that's near there was freaking out because they have a grand total of 11 motel rooms and <laughs> half a million people come into town. So all these things are happening. And then there was a story a few years ago. I remember this one, the Vatican. Pope mm. Francis declared that if aliens showed up, he'd be happy to baptize them. And so here we've got the Pope getting in on it. It's He wasn't really telling a flying saucer story. No, but. I remember he said, are, are, who are we to close the doors to anyone, even Martians? Even Martians, right? <laughs> that was yeah. memorable. It was actually a sermon illustration, I think, sure. on, to defend the Pope. Oh, we've got to take a break. Listen to that. I talked about flying saucers so long that we have to take a little break. And so we'll be right back after this. Are you searching for answers to life's toughest questions like, where is God when we suffer? Can I find real happiness? Or is there any hope for our chaotic world? The Discover Bible Guides will help you find the answers you're looking for. Visit us at BibleStudies.com or give us a call at 888-456-7933 for your free Discover Bible Guides. Study online on our secure website or have the free guides mailed right to your home. There is never a cost or obligation. 
The Discover Bible Guides are our free gift to you. Find answers and guides like, Does My Life Really Matter to God? and A Second Chance at Life. You'll find answers to the things that matter most to you in each of the 26 Discover Bible Guides. Visit BibleStudies.com and begin your journey today to discover answers to life's deepest questions. You were having far too much fun with my <laughs> alien sunglasses. I was, but I, I can't remember. I don't know. We should auction with, these off, maybe. I don't blue. know. If somebody watching on Facebook wants them. Um, there you go. I mean, these are, these. are they're not exactly top quality. I don't know if they'd no. survive another mailing. But, they might not, but, but they're super fun. They are kind Love of fun. Mm -hmm. They are kind of fun. We're talking about aliens, UFOs, the abduction phenomenon, all that stuff, and we're going to look at it from a biblical perspective and try and figure out what's going on. But did you just try and organize me? I did. Did you just... <laughs> Just the, told you the mom and you never dies. You just pointed <laughs> nope. to where you want me to put the glasses. Yep. All right. And you did it. Almost. So, you know, you asked, why are we doing this? Well, because I've sort of followed this phenomenon since the time I was a little kid. And just before the break, we were talking about the fact, where is this story? The Pope, Pope Francis says he would definitely baptize aliens if they asked him to. Mm -hmm. That's a 2014 story. Um, and just before, you know, it's easy to say, see, look at that. The Vatican, I know what some people are thinking. The Vatican is uh, in the know, along with the American government. They're secretly hiding aliens uh, underground in the Vatican. Um, no, he was using it as a sermon illustration, maybe a bad one. Um, he got quoted all over the world, so it got him some publicity. But he was talking about the original phenomenon where the Christian church went out and baptized Gentiles and bringing these, I guess, alien people mm -hmm. into the church, which was primarily Jewish to mm -hmm. begin with in mm -hmm. the first century, until Paul goes out to the Gentile nations. And so he's saying, look, that in the same light, I would baptize a Martian if he showed up. So there you go. Right. Now, to be honest, to be honest, I used to laugh at people who believed in this stuff. I mean, let, let me talk about sort of why I want to talk about this today. I for me, it's amusing, right? Flying saucers, it's entertaining, it's interesting. Is it true? No, no way, it's not true. I mean, I never once, well, maybe when I was nine, went outside because those shows would scare me, and I'd look up in the sky to see if I could see an alien craft. But as an adult, did I believe this? No, right? I I didn't believe that there were real flying saucers and stuff, and and I used to think that the whole thing was a whole bunch of baloney, but here's what I need to say. I don't laugh at it anymore, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. in my travels over the last quarter century, 27 years, whatever it is, I've been putting on public seminars dealing with Bible prophecy, and I have met far too many people who share similar stories. Mm -hmm. They tell me the same thing all over the world. Now, some of the similarities in these stories are easy to explain because they all sound like they watched Close Encounters of the thir Third Kind. You mm -hmm. know, they, it's mm -hmm. got the almost down to the alien ship using music to communicate. Do, 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 do. <laughs> right. right? Um, but some of the similarities that people are talking about, they're not so easy to explain. They don't come from Hollywood. They don't come from popular books. And I've noticed people saying the same things again and again, and I guess it's just how intriguing, I find it so intriguing how many people I've noticed are telling UFO stories mm -hmm. all over the planet. Well, and, and and there's been some real study done. There's been real science applied. We talked about Project Blue Book. Not only was that a, a show in the 70s, it was, it was a real study that was done by, by the Air Force. And they studied over 12,000 reports of UFO sightings during that era, the early 50s until 1970. And um, when I was reading a little bit about that that project, Sean, one of the, the gentlemen that was a part of it, he was an astronomer, Joseph Hynek. Um, he he was an astronomer. He was a professor. He did right. a lot of the research in Project Blue Book. And he said, you know, just what you're saying, you know, it's, it's not to be laughed at. There are enough incidences that you have to give it some um, credibility and study it at least. And I think he said this. He said, ridicule is not part of the scientific method and people should not be taught that it I is. I don't know if ridicule is not part. Well, it's not part of the scientific method, but right. we know that the scientific community ridicules Bible believers. And so I, I'll i take partial exception to what he just said. <laughs> well, but he's saying in, what it in should other words, be. You, you, you should... You 
should study it and you should right. listen to people and 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 ridicule isn't part of that right. process. Yeah, and I, I've just seen too much for me not to think something is going on. Do I believe that they're visitors from another world? Well, we're going to unpack that from the Bible today. I, I, I'm not sure. convinced uh, of that at all. But, I mean, I just, I've run into too many people. Um, mm-hmm. I think about, I'll protect her identity, Deborah. Deborah was coming to meetings of mine, oh, probably 20 years ago. And I went to visit her. She, she lived on a boat in the harbor, kind of cool. And as we're sitting there, she suddenly leans forward and tells me, um, you know, almost every night something comes down, floats down over top of my boat, and every so often these beings step out of it and they visit with me. And I, mm. you know, and I was ready to say, oh boy, you know, the cheese slid off the cracker. Deborah's lost it. But I've heard it so often from otherwise normal, rational people that I am convinced that something is going on. And there's a common thread that we'll talk about before the show is over today that will help us piece together sure. what I think is going on. But even people I highly respect um henry you remember henry before he passed Mm -hmm. um he surprised me he was a minister he said yeah one time i was in a hotel in the middle east and i looked out the window and i saw something floating outside the window i cannot explain Hmm. and Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. um yeah people are seeing something people are seeing something that's right yeah so do you have some examples of some of these stories i just gave those to you you did okay (laughs) well those are good those are good i guess i mean there's lots of them i've got hundreds of them well and i'm thinking of others too you know i personally haven't ever met someone who's who shared with me a story that they knew but i've i've read a few over the years and there was one um back in 2004 uh you probably remember hearing about this too there were navy fighter jet pilots who were out on an aircraft carrier and they reported that they saw unidentified flying objects off of the coast of San Diego. And these are Navy men and women. These are people who, you know, are trained. They they right. kind of know what they're looking for. Um, and, and then more recently, some military pilots were flying with the USS Theodore Roosevelt in the Atlantic, and they made similar claims. Right. So these are individuals that um, normally are taken very seriously. They are they are people who are trained and skilled, and they're seeing things that yep. they could not explain. So here's the big question: Has my wife ever seen one? <clears throat> no, no, not to my knowledge. No. I have not. No. No. No, nothing that I can say. I uh, have. I have. That's unidentified. No, I, I absolutely tell have. Us, tell us about well, yours. Well, I, I have, but I mean. Have I seen a UFO? Yes. If we define it in the strictest sense, it's an unidentified flying object. Have I seen something flying in the sky that I didn't know what it was? Yes, I have. Do Mm -hmm. I believe it was space aliens? No, I don't. And there's the difference right there. I I don't believe it at all. I mean, once I looked out of an airplane window, I had the window seat, and we're somewhere over Arizona, and there was something hanging outside the window that was red and, and cylindrical and definitely steel. And it was hanging in the sky, and it looked like it was about 20 feet tall, and it was, you know, it, I didn't know what it was. Do I think it's an alien? No. And then mm-hmm. one time here in the foothills of Colorado, I saw something that looked kind of similar. I don't think that they're space aliens. They're just something that I can't explain. Sure. But I don't sure. believe it's visitors from another world. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. believe it. Yeah. No. Um, Well, I guess the question is then, you've seen some things that you can't explain. Clearly, more than 12,000 reports just between the early 50s and 1970, people saw things they couldn't explain. So what are they? What are people seeing? Well, here's where we're going to start unpacking things a little bit. And I I have at least six theories about what they (laughs) are, all right, outside Mm -hmm. of them being space aliens. Number one, I think a lot of what people are seeing happen to be um, aviation experiments. That, mm. That's what they are. Um, here's what happened. At the end of World War II, if you just want to look up something called Operation Paperclip, um, we evacuated a whole bunch of German scientists, the Americans did, at the end of World War II, and moved them over here. You know, uh, Werner von Braun, they helped launch our space program in the 1960s. If you go back and look at what the Germans were dealing with, there's a few things that were going on. By the 1870s up through World War I, and then especially from the end of World War I up until World War II, Mm -hmm. there was a a popular movement in Germany that dealt with the occult. And so we'll get to that in just a minute. But the other thing that the Germans were doing was working on military technology. And one of the things they were experimenting with was disc-shaped flying machines, Hmm. right? 
And you can find the blueprints for these. It's not hard to find. They were experimenting with these. And you'll notice that the spaceship sightings in America happened after 1945. They did. That, right. That's when this really began. Right. So these are moving here. Uh, the delta shape, the triangle shaped craft that start showing up in the 1970s, they proved to be stealth fighters, I think. And and the Germans were experimenting with disc-shaped stuff. And you'll notice that the first UFO stories were all about discs, and then it changed, and then they're mm -hmm. delta-shaped, and then they change again. And, um, and then I look at where we have all these mysterious sightings. Where do people see these things? Well, around Area 51. What is Area 51? It's an Air Force base. Mm -hmm. It's a secret facility. They're mm -hmm. testing new equipment there. Uh, the, cro the, the famous one, the crash in Roswell. I almost said the crash in Roswell. <laughs> <laughs> the the crash in Roswell right. happens in 1947. Mm -hmm. You and I have been to Roswell out mm -hmm. of curiosity. We went to the Flying mm -hmm. Saucer Museum and mm -hmm. saw where this mysterious crash was. The official story, it was a weather balloon. But what is right over the hill from Roswell? Edwards Air Force Base. Right? No, 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 no. Edwards Air Force Base isn't anywhere near New Mexico. Oh. But it's the White Sands Missile Base the White Sands Proving Grounds. You and I have been over there. Remember the time I we remember. drove through there and a fixed-wing drone came down and flew over our car? Yeah. Like they yeah. were toying with us as we're driving across the property. That was you, just a couple years yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. Well, they opened that in 1945. Right. Over the hill from Roswell. And then in 1947, something mysterious crashes in Roswell and the government moves in and cleans <laughs> it all up. Right. Come on, folks. Do right. the math here. What do you think it is? It's from the Air Force Base. Sure. It's, I don't think it was a weather balloon either. They move in. They clean it up. The missile testing base is right on the other side of the hill. Come mm -hmm, on, man. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I think crashed into the ground. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of what people are seeing, I mean, we were behind the Alaska Panhandle. That's not that far from Alaska. Uh, as kids, we saw these delta-shaped things. Um, sometimes I think it's actually swamp gas or helicopters or planes, and I know people will dispute that, but... Do you remember when you we, we lived in Los Angeles that um, you could look out and see airplanes flying into LAX and they wouldn't make a sound? Mm -hmm. They'd be dead silent. Mm -hmm. They'd cut engines by that point. And something tells me, and I could be wrong about this, that the marine layer sometimes would deflect sound away from the ground. And even here in Colorado, I sometimes look at the foothills at night and you can see these planes coming in, but they look like lights that are moving in an odd direction just because of the angle we're looking in them. Sure. And, th and they're silent. So... I think sometimes people are seeing things that, like planes and helicopters and weather balloons, I think that does happen as well. Well, too, often we see it before we hear the noise yeah. because the noise travels more slowly. And so... The, yeah, but that would be seconds. A little that would bit be later, just a few, it might have an ex explanation. That, that doesn't explain 10 minutes of silence. No, that's true. It doesn't. That's true. Um, here's one that we're going to talk about in the back half of the show. Somebody once, years ago, took a map of UFO sightings where they happen the most often, and then they superimposed it on a map of New Age and occult centers. Hmm. And they seem to correspond. These things hmm. are showing up wherever we have a lot of occult activity and New Age activity. Um, and I found that really interesting, that UFOs tend, and we're going to get into this in the back half of the show for our Bible study, but these things tend to show up where people are dabbling in spiritualism and the occult, and the New Age, mm -hmm. why would the UFOs go there, mm, right? So I think there is something spiritual going on in a lot of these. That's the music already. You talked <laughs> so much. You talked so much this oh, segment. And, yeah, it's all me. Yeah so, oh. um, yeah, so I think some of it is real experimental aircraft that we, you know, wait 10 years and what you saw in the sky will come out in public. Sure. Um, some of it is natural phenomenon. You just couldn't explain it from the angle you were at. But I do think there's something spiritualistic and occult going on in some of these cases. And that's what we're going to talk about after the break. Write down this information coming up from the Voice of Prophecy. You're going to love it. And we'll be right back. Disclosure is just one of the programs brought to you by the Voice of Prophecy, like the audio adventure program, Discovery Mountain. Discovery Mountain is a weekly Bible-based program for kids of all ages and backgrounds. Your family will enjoy faith-building stories with Jake Donovan, <laughs> Mr. Simon, and others in this small mountain town. 
Each summer, campers visit Discovery Mountain where they sing songs, learn about God, and reenact a Bible story with the help of drama teachers, Miss Wendy and Miss Tamara. With 24 full episodes every year and programming every week, your family will have something uplifting to listen to every week. Listen to episodes on demand and watch video features from Director Doug at discoverymountain.com or on your favorite podcast platform. That's discoverymountain.com. We are back from the break. Nobody was abducted. Everybody's still in their seats. In the meantime, I think somebody on Facebook said, you know, weren't Enoch and Elijah abducted? It's true. Something did catch them up into the air, but we never saw them again. Um, And that reminds me that it's probably, instead of being excited about all the news reports and stuff, it's probably time to get into our Bible study because... (laughs) Let's do that. We are a Bible program. Yeah, I do find Mm -hmm. this intriguing. Um, Mm -hmm. Some people insist. You know, I, I mentioned Project Blue Book earlier in the show and it opened with ezekiel saw the wheel it was a flying saucer that kind of stuff yeah is it is what ezekiel saw a flying saucer well if you remember deborah on the boat she claimed after she told me that these beings would come down and look at her and communicate with her Mm -hmm. it's a flying saucer um, and again, I think we can thank Eric Van Daniken for that thought. He, he, I, if he's not, if it didn't originate with him, he's certainly the granddaddy of this idea that aliens planted he life took on it, planet He took Earth, it mainstream, you know. if nothing yeah, else. Yeah, he did. And sure. he, he, here's the issue with Ezekiel. You know, mm-hmm. it's Ezekiel chapter 1 is, is ground zero. And I had this Bible study with Deborah on the boat. And in Ezekiel chapter 1, he does see something in exp- – now i got to get my real glasses. Mm-hmm. I'm putting on my bifocals. <laughs> Not the and those of glasses. you who are still young out there in Facebook land, um, just wait. Your eyes are going to go, too. And yeah. you're back. And you, have, you, you yeah. will not be the only person who doesn't age. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. Ezekiel 1, he sees these living creatures, and nobody would make a UFO out of that except that these are mysterious-looking creatures. Mm-hmm. There's a whirlwind, but in Ezekiel 1 and verse 15, he says – Mm-hmm. Now, as I looked at the living creatures, behold, a wheel was on the earth beside each living creature with its four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their workings was like the color of barrel. Then it says that they move in one of the four compass directions. The rims were full of eyes. That's what I got in trouble for in the fifth grade in a Christian school <laughs> saying, those were lights. Okay. No, um, definitely not. But is this a flying saucer? No. No, no it's not. No. And. Well, you know what I find interesting before we really uh, parse this out, Ezekiel chapter 1, is, of course, Ezekiel's a prophet, and he's in vision here in Ezekiel chapter 1. And he he is talking about, and he is showing us a picture of something that isn't of this earth. It's not earthly. So it does seem otherworldly because he's he's taking us into... um, the ha- what ha- what's happening in heaven? Well, exactly. He's showing us heavenly things. Well, exactly, and that's that's what I wanted to point out here. It's where mm-hmm. we're we're going. If this was primarily about seeing a flying craft, mm-hmm. then it would have opened that way. But we talk about the whirlwind and the creatures and the wheels come in much much later. Right. And those who make a flying saucer out of this are um, going running to the end zone much faster than they should because um, it's almost incidental, the wheels. The wheels are important. And it it mentions, if you look at this at the end of the same chapter in verse 26, Mm -hmm. he looks up and what does he see? Mm. He sees the likeness of a throne. Right. So you've got these four creatures. We've talked about this in other programs. They have the same faces as the living creatures that you find in Revelation chapters 4 and 5. And just as you said... Mm -hmm. Um, In Revelation 4 and 5, John is being shown a vision of the throne room in heaven. Mm -hmm. So you have the same creatures and you have a throne in Ezekiel 1. He's seeing something similar to the vision of heaven in Revelation chapters 4 and 5. It's the throne room of God. It's the the throne room of God. And the the living creatures aren't identified as Martians. If you compare what Ezekiel says in chapter 10, he calls them the cherubim. Right. Right. Exactly. Which are also associated with the throne of God. Mm-hmm. And, and, and these eyes, you know, I think the eyes were, that are part of this wheel. So this wheel shows that the throne room of God is not, it's different from an earthly king or queen's throne room. Um, it, it, God is is 
isn't static in time or place. He he's with his people. It's movable. It's just different from right. from anything we've ever seen here on well, earth. And those eyes show us, you know, God also sees everything. Right. Eyes are an important symbol in Bible prophecy that he it it it, it shows the omniscience of God. Mm-hmm. And so but he, here's kind of what's going on. Why wheels then? Mm-hmm. You know? And if you look at the way wheels are used in the ancient world in biblical literature, um, here's an example. In James chapter 3, mm-hmm. it's a famous verse talking about guarding our tongues. Verse 6 says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among the members, our members' body parts, mm-hmm. that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. That word, the course, in Greek is trokos. It means wheel. Mm. They used a wheel to symbolize a course of events. So if you look at Ezekiel, here's what's happening. He's in captivity. Their world has fallen right. apart, right? They've right. been taken to Babylon. Babylon. Mm-hmm. And so there's a whirlwind. That's destructive. That's confusion. There's these confusing beasts. And then he sees the wheels, which is telling him, no, there's a method to this madness. This is all going somewhere. And then he looks up and sees God's throne. Right. He's a captive. John is a prisoner on Patmos when he sees the same thing and is shown the throne room of God. God is reminding his prophets, as confusing as this world gets, I'm st- this has nothing to do with aliens. <laughs> right, right. No, Nothing to doesn't. do at all. It- it, it, it's an assurance for, right. for us, for those captives in that day, and then for us in the future, right, that God is above all of this. He is in charge of the mov- movements of human history. That's You're exactly right. it. Mm-hmm. And, and it describes trokos in Greek is a circuit. It, it's like a domino effect. If you start this, it knocks over all the dominoes, and it's telling us God's in charge of knocking down the dominoes in this world. And if you look at the other prophetic writings, it shows that he's in charge of the rise and fall of different kingdoms and so on. So Ezekiel 1, flying saucer, eh, no, no, it's not. It's yeah. just not. The only way you can come to that conclusion is to lift that vision out of the Bible and ignore everything else the other biblical prophets said and not compare them. But but I, I love that. I love this chapter of the Bible, and I I see why people for generations have been fascinated by it, because it shows us something so different from our day-to-day life. It shows us something bigger and greater and um, something that we as humans were created to be a part of, which is more than just this earth. You know, God created us to be a part eventually and again of heaven and of this world. And and that really ties into to the 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 alien. Here's the big question then. I mean Ezekiel Mm -hmm. one, I give anybody who tries to make a flying saucer out of that a Bible fail. They are failing. Sure. It still leaves this question in some people's mind, is it possible that there's life on other planets? Is there? Well that's an intriguing possibility. You I know, mean, yeah. yeah, I, I, Sean, I'm, I always remember our, our daughter Naomi, our youngest daughter, when she was four, and you remember this story. She just, she, she somehow her little four year old brain was thinking about that question: Is there life on other planets? And I said to her, "Well, I don't know, honey." And then she asked me, "Are there aliens?" And I said, "No, honey, I don't, I don't think so." <laughs> and then she said, "But, mom, how do you know? Have you been to the whole universe?" Right. And I had to stop and say, "No, I have." obviously. So there is that question, what else is out there? Well, the Bible doesn't close the door on that. I know Christians who come down on both sides. Yes, there's life on other worlds. No, there absolutely is not. Humanity is the only part of God's creation. Well, Mm -hmm. first of all, we have to say, look, there is non-human intelligent life out there because the Bible describes God's heaven and the angelic beings who live there. So we've got that. Um, You'll find a few passages in the Bible, Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 11, that mentions that when God created, by the Word of God, he he created worlds. Now, worlds could mean different planets, I suppose, but it typically means different eons, different dispensations, different ages. Mm -hmm. Uh, But other people will look at Isaiah 45, and uh, it says that the Lord made the heavens and the earth, And he did not create, this is Isaiah 45, verse 18, he did not create it in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. So then you look out there, and we're discovering there's billions of planets out there, where the rest of them all made in vain. Right. Then you couple that with this thought that shows up in Job chapter 1. There's this heavenly council where all the sons of God, it says in Job 1, verse 6, come to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan comes among them. Now, if, you know, the sons of God, some people say that's got to be angels and Satan's a fallen angel, 
But there's this other thought that, that kind of shows up that Adam was also called the son of God in Luke chapter 3. Mm-hmm. And the human race had just turned dominion over planet Earth over to a fallen angel. We call him Satan. And now he comes like he owns the Earth now after humanity has sinned. So some people look there and say, well, there's the possibility these other sons of God are visiting from other parts of the universe. So is the possibility there? Yes. But the big question would be, if they did exist, would they be visiting us? Mm, and th- and that's a good question. Yeah. I, yeah. I say no. I don't know. No, well, I, I don't no. think so, but... Well, there's... Look, the nearest star system is Alpha Centauri. It's 4.3 light years away. That is 25 trillion miles. Trilli- it would take four and a half years of traveling at the speed of light to get mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you wanted to get there in a year. So here's the possible. And some people say, yeah, but a whole colony could go and they could give birth on the spaceship. And a million <laughs> generations later, they arrive in the new star system. But there's big problems with that. The radiation you'd be exposed to in space would basically sterilize everybody on board. Sure. And there would be no sure. there would be no babies. And- well, you know, and, and I often think that it's it's a little egocentric of us to think that if there's life in this vast, vast, vast universe, that they're all coming to visit right. us. Why are they coming to visit us? Well, I know. Yeah. Well, maybe to see what it's like when a civilization messes it's up fallen. and sins, you mm-hmm. know. But I don't think fallen, you know, if there are other worlds out there that didn't sin, I mean, this opens up a whole can of worms. <laughs> I don't believe, other than angelic beings, that it's a possibility that they're coming here. First of all, the science doesn't add up. Now, I'll admit, we don't know everything, and people laughed at the idea of flight once upon a time, so maybe sure. one day it'll be possible to jump through a wormhole and go 25 trillion miles, but I'm not sure God would let sinful beings do that and show up 25 trillion miles away and contaminate another planet. Hmm, you know, why, why would he do that yeah. before? Yeah. So, you know, is it possible? I think it absolutely is possible. The The Bible has that door open, but I doubt they're visiting us. Yeah. I'm, and it doesn't take... to. Yeah. So there you go. So then the question is, and we're down to the last segment, just about two minutes to go to the break, but what is going on what with abduction? Happening? Because something right. is going on. Sure. What mm-hmm. is it is the big question. And that's what we have all of 15 minutes to unpack <laughs> is uh, what really is going on when people say they're abducted. I no longer laugh at everybody. And I can right. think of a number of things that absolutely are going on. What do you mm-hmm. think is going on? Well, uh, as you said, we need to spend a little time on this. But that I think there are a lot of things. There are a lot of explanations for what could be going on. And we'll, we'll, we're we'll going to take a break in a minute. But let me just touch on what I think they are, and we can break them down after. Uh, first, I think... This phenomenon started after World War II. Yep. Uh, we described it kind of growing and almost peaking in recent years. Uh, some would say it we're past the peak. Some would say it's just going to resurge about you, this whole obsession with aliens and UFOs. But in that culture... People sold a lot of books. A lot of books yeah. were written. People's yeah. stories. There was fame based on on telling of stories. Um, I also think there are uh, psychological yeah. explanations for what's going on. I uh, also believe that, you know, um, there are physiological explanations for this, yeah. and we should talk about that. Well, there are. Absolutely. So, yeah, I think you're right. When it became popular from the 1940s and 50s, just I think in the same way that a lot of people um, want to hop on YouTube with something sensational to mm-hmm. become famous, I, I think there are attention seekers. I don't think that explains sure. everything Definitely by a long not. shot, but I think but there's attention seekers. It's oh, yeah, come on. Yeah. Jimmy yeah. in my elementary school told us all he'd been abducted, and so J- Jimmy just wanted to be, you know, have the class pay attention to him. So I do think that, that there is some of that that goes on. But when we come back from the break, I will give you four or five rapid fire because I want to get to the last of my points, what I think is going on, because we do need to pay attention to it. So we're going to take a little break and we're going to come back and say, man, something is going on. What in the world is it? What's going on when somebody says they see a flying saucer or they're abducted by aliens? Something's going on out there. Mm -hmm. And we're going to come back and take a look at that right after this break. searching for answers to life's toughest questions? Like, where is God when we suffer? Can I find real happiness? Does my life really matter to God? Or is there any hope for our chaotic world? The Discover Bible Guides will help you find the answers that you're looking for. Visit us at BibleStudies.com or give us a call at 888-456-7933 for your free Discover Bible Guides. 
study online on our secure website, or have the free guides mailed right to your home. There is never a cost or obligation. The Discover Bible Guides are our free gift to you. Find answers in guides like A Second Chance at Life. You'll find answers to the things that matter the most to you. Visit BibleStudies.com and begin your journey today to discover answers to life's deepest questions. Did you hear the digital pipes in the in the bumper music? I did. Yeah, it's a little Sounds bit good. spacey. It's a little bit space alieny. <laughs> is that a word? Is, some, can some, is that an adjective? Alien-y. If something is alieny, sure, it's why alien-like. Not? Yeah. All right. What do we think is actually going on with abduction experiences? Because there is something going on, and people really experience it. And Gene, I promise I'm going to give you rapid fire. I'm going to give you th- good. four or five Go. things I think are going on, but then we're going to land on the one that I think we should pay attention to the most. Okay. Number one, we we already mentioned before the break. It's attention seeking. I think mm-hmm. there's some of that going on. Mm-hmm. That doesn't explain everything. Number two, sleep paralysis. Yes. Right? Um, it's the old hag syndrome. There's a thing that happens to people, and I know about this one firsthand because it happens to me, where, you know, your body paralyzes you when you go to sleep so that you don't act out your dreams. Can you imagine me acting out my dreams, right, in the middle of the night? <laughs> right. Um, and so you wake There's this thing called sleep paralysis where you wake up, but the paralysis is still on and you're wide awake and you can't move. Right. And you almost always sense that something is in the room with you. It's mm-hmm. a terrifying... I've been through this a few times. So mm-hmm. so that's uh, a l- legitimate uh, physiological yeah. explanation potentially for what people are well, experiencing. It is. And here mm-hmm. it shows up, I believe. You know, Whitley Strieber put out a book, and I, this would be in the 1980s, I think, when it first came out, Communion, his abduction experience. And, and he says this. In his book, in the wee hours of the night, I abruptly woke up. There was somebody quite close to the bed, but the room seemed so unnaturally dark that I couldn't see much at all. I felt an absolute indescribable sense of menace. Yes, yet I couldn't move, I couldn't cry out, and I couldn't get away. Mm -hmm. That, my friends, is sleep Sleep paralysis. paralysis. Yeah. So sleep paralysis, I think, goes on. Here's an intriguing theory. I don't know if there's any weight to it or not, but I think it's possible that what people are going through is a memory of their own birth. Right? (laughs) They, no, no. I've heard that. They suddenly, heard that. they suddenly are helpless. They're whipped into a bright room, and people are pot, prodding and poking them. Think about mm. what happens to a newborn in the delivery room, yeah, right? True. Suddenly, it's bright, and they're out, and there's these weird-looking creatures spanking them and taking their temperature and <laughs> poking and. Pro- I think that might be there. Might be something there to explore. Okay. Uh, number four. Uh, sometimes I think aliens is a better story than what really happened to you. Mm. I remember I had this one gal who believed that aliens had impregnated her, and she was about. To, And then I dug into the story a little deeper, and I thought, why would you? She said she was going to deliver the second coming. And Jesus always shows up in these stories for some reason, right? Why would Jesus show up? Mm -hmm. But it turns out she was in a same-sex relationship and pregnant, and she was going to have to explain to her partner how it is that she was pregnant and and came up with an alien conception. Interesting. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think sometimes maybe people were involved in ritual abuse as kids, and they've Mm -hmm. got memories of that, and their brains are blocking it out or trying to make... There's a lot, but but here again, I said earlier that if you superimpose a map of hot spots of spiritualistic activity, and um, and UFO sightings, man, they are right on top of each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. uh, and what I find fascinating here is that if you take the alien encounters that people have, and then you compare them to the spiritualistic activity that was going on in the 19th century. So we, you know, in the 19th century, spiritualism was all the rage. We had the Fox sisters who had mysterious wrappings right. in the house. Right. You even had, it got so popular that Mary Lincoln, after some personal tragedy, was holding seances in the White House. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Well, I don't know if they were actually in the White House, but she was holding seances, and I believe Abraham Lincoln went to one or two of those. Darwin in the 1870s went to a seance. This was very popular, and they were very popular in Germany leading up into uh, World War II. And then you compare the messages that these people are getting from alien beings, and what you find is that they very closely parallel the messages that people were getting at spiritualistic seances in the 19th century. Right. It's almost as if the seance wasn't good enough anymore, and in a high-tech space-age society, the same messages had to be delivered by other beings that you mm-hmm. could explain scientifically, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here's what's fascinating. 
The spiritualistic movement of the 19th century was a deliberate effort. If you read those who gave birth to it, Madame Blavatsky and others, and I'm not, rem I'm not recommending anybody reads this garbage. I read it for you. <laughs> no, really, don't, don't immerse your mind in this stuff. But um, what I find fascinating is that they were attempting to reconcile. You know, the world had gone very materialistic. We were in the Enlightenment, and we were coming up on the Industrial Age, and then the Scientific Age. But there's an aching void in everybody's heart for spiritual content. Right. And they're trying to reconcile spiritualism, or a desire for spirituality with science, and they come up with seances. Well, mm. those kind of fall out of fashion. Mm -hmm. And now we have alien encounters. Mm -hmm. Here's what's interesting. Uh, Whitley Strieber wrote another book, Transformation, and he he sees a female alien and he ponders aloud, I think this might be the Virgin Mary that people were seeing way back when, and it's an alien. Right. right. Why is it to? Uh, he, he wrote another book, Afterlife Revolution. He made a pact with his wife, Anne, that she, if one of them died first, the other would come back and communicate. Mm -hmm. And so his wife, Anne, dies and come. He, he starts with flying saucers and he ends up with the speaking to the dead. Mm -hmm. And throughout human history, we've seen these these alien type of of um, creatures. I guess I'm thinking of fairies and dragons, and yeah. they, they've been part of our story as humans. And and what you're sharing, Sean, reminds me of something I read um, as we were getting ready for this program today by David Clark. He's a UFO researcher. He was a believer formerly. He's now a skeptic, but he wrote something really interesting, and I'll just quote him. He says, "We've become more materialistic, scientific, secular." And yet we are exactly the same human beings with the same physiological and psychological makeup. Our brains are hardwired to believe in something other than ourselves. And of course, I make the right. application we're, we're designed by a creator, God, to be to be connected to, to right. something bigger than us as we, mere humans. And we took that away mm -hmm. in the industrial age and the scientific age, and people are looking to fill the void. Absolutely. So here comes here comes seances. Believe it or not, they were considered a scientific approach to the afterlife, right? And now we've got flying saucers. And here's the threat, and here's what I wanted to land on today and what everybody needs to pay attention to. If these are visitors from other worlds, why in the world do they all seem to need to get to the subject of who Jesus is, hmm. right? Why yeah. in the world are they talking about someone who lived on Earth 2,000 years ago? Except, and, and when you see what they're, well, here, I'll give you some examples. Okay. The Aetherius Society. This is a flying saucer cult that began by George King in the 1950s in, well, guess which state? Uh, if you were to guess a state for flying saucers, which Nevada. one would it be? No, no, no. No? No, I California, man. Oh, <laughs> yeah, California. California. Okay. So, um... <laughs> He, it, it, his cult was based on theosophy. It looks just like the spiritualistic cults of the 19th century, Madame Blavatsky and so on. But he, the, he gets communications from an alien being who tells him that throughout history, cosmic masters like Buddha, Jesus, Lao Tzu, and others have come to Earth to teach mankind their ways. And he says Jesus is from Venus uh, and others are from other worlds. So now Jesus is just a space alien. And he's, um, he's a master, a cosmic master, and you can become as evolved as Jesus if you just walk the same path. So now Jesus is just a guru. Hmm. Uh, the original one, Eric von Daniken, mm -hmm. um, he has to dismiss God, too. He has to get to Genesis and human origins and who God is. And he says, see, space aliens show up in Genesis 6, and the reason God speaks of himself in the plural and the story of creation is because it's an entire race of alien beings. Uh, transformation. You know, he he talks about are these the spirits of the dead? These aliens, or are are they um, are they the gods? Shirley MacLaine out on a limb. Yep, mm. she was out on a limb. All right. Um, she gets around to flying saucers. She says her spirit guides are from outer space. These beings that are communicating with them spiritually, mm -hmm. that they're highly evolved. And then it comes right to Jesus. Mm. Here's what it says in her book, Out on a Limb. In the New Testament, Christ said, you are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. So now she's saying Jesus said he was in constant contact with beings from another world called angels, but they're actually aliens. And by the end of the book, sure enough, aliens are coming around with the message that anybody can be as perfect as Christ. You can ascend to the—they're all dismissing Jesus. If these are beings from another world, why do they feel the need to show up here and downplay who Jesus is? That's mm -hmm. exactly what the spirits were doing. The spirits were saying you can communicate with the dead— in, during the 19th century, even though God expressly forbids communicating with the dead. 
So we get that. Now the aliens show up and they do exactly the same thing. There's life after death. You're going to leave your body one day. Jesus isn't anything special. He's just what you can become. Why, why, why in the world do these alien beings need to downplay Jesus? What does that have to do with space travel? Mm. I'm telling you that I believe that the, the abduction experience and communication with these beings is nothing different than it has been through all centuries. As you point out, people have been having weird encounters. What it is, it's spiritualism dressed up for the new age, and they give their hand away the minute they start dabbling with who Jesus is. And again, just pay attention, mm. folks. Why in the world would an alien need to talk about Jesus? So it's it's the same, same thing that's been happening since the beginning of human history. And this is just what it looks like in today's this day. Is this is the modern yeah. manifestation of, of what it looks like. Right. A lot of mm-hmm. people laughed at the seance table and the Ouija board. Ha, ha, ha. You know, that's a joke. You can't communicate with the dead and stuff. So mm-hmm. now they don't come out of the grave. They come in a flying saucer. Right, and honestly... Right. Folks, there's a lot of things that are going on that people confuse with alien beings and so on, but this, in my heart of hearts, the fact that it always, always contradicts the Word of God. Just read some of these alien encounters. They downplay Jesus. They say, some of them say there is no such thing as sin, and mm-hmm. and suddenly these alien beings will teach reincarnation. If this is just science and these are beings from another world, why do they feel the need to teach reincarnation, right. contradict what the Bible says, up. and why does Jesus always show up in the discussion at some point? Hmm. And and it, it's true. The Bible is – they have to explain the Bible away in Chariots of the Gods. Whitley Strieber moves from aliens to these are the souls of the dead, and, and it always comes back to Jesus. Hmm. Why? Mm-hmm. Why? Mm-hmm. Why? You have You have fallen angels – tempting men in the Bible or human beings in the Bible. Uh, You even have the devil saying, bow down to me, I'll give you the kingdoms of this world to Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. And the message doesn't change. And that means our ears should be up and our eyes should be open. Before you consider the fact that what seems to be physically impossible, aliens from a distant world 25 trillion miles away, Maybe somebody's still toying with our perception of spiritual things. Maybe mm-hmm, that's what's mm-hmm. going on. Well, because the the devil doesn't care how he he gets us off track, how he r- railroads us. If if he's disconnecting us from God, he, it doesn't matter. If we won't believe in fairies anymore, then if mm-hmm. we believe in aliens, his the mission is still accomplished. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And again. I think one of the strongest ones was in Whitley Strieber's communion. Please don't go out. I probably just did an uptick in sales for him. But, you know, it starts out, I don't know what these are. I think they're alien beings, and they've got the almond-shaped eyes and all that stuff. But by his second book, maybe these are the spirits of the dead. And by his third book, it's his own dead wife communicating with him. My goodness. So we started to think of seance as a superstition. Mm -hmm. And why is it that that these encounters go down exactly the same path? Here's why it's appealing, and I found it appealing as a kid. That's obvious, right? You know, mm-hmm. you know, alien encounters, flying saucers. We're all looking for something out there, as you mentioned. There's a void left in the heart in a purely materialistic universe, and none of us wants to think we're all by ourselves down right. here, right? right. That, that's depressing. Mm-hmm. The answer to that is not a flying saucer. The answer to that is what the Bible says in Proverbs eight seventeen. God says, those who seek me diligently will find me. Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with your whole heart. Uh, Jeremiah 9, 24. Let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me. Amen. You're looking for something all right, mm-hmm. but it's not these beings. These beings terrorize. These beings traumatize people. If it's truly a spiritualistic encounter, run, run, run away. It's not the answer. Somebody's actually trying to keep you from finding the answer. Mm-hmm. That's what I believe is going on. So... You're going to take the glasses home? We're going to give those away. I don't know. Maybe we'll have to jump on Facebook and see you do look what people good. were saying while well, you do, watching. You do look good in the alien glasses. You think and, so? <laughs> yeah. So we'll end the episode this way. I'm putting the glasses on. Oh, I got both glasses on. No, they're not alien beings. I might be, but none of those other encounters are alien beings. Hey, that's it for this week. Time's up because Gene talks so much in the fourth quarter. There you go. <laughs> but uh, we are out of time. Until next time, I'm Sean. And Thanks for listening. Yep. Yeah.